The National Library of Malaysia was established in 1956. The firm responsible for the library's traditional design is Kumpulan Architect, which was a relatively large architectural firm in the 80s. Back then, the firm had already consisted of around 18 to 20 architects. The building's design is based on the concept of the traditional Malay headgear, the Tengkolo, which is a symbol of intellectual pride and respect in Malaysian culture. The tiles on the roof are also unique, containing patterns inspired by the Kain Songe, a traditional hand-woven cloth. The Tengkolo denotes uh, the Malay traditional uh, suit. You can see these people wear that when they get married. When they wear the Tengkolo, uh, the that's the full gear for the wedding. All right. For the old, old uh, traditional wedding right now. And the reason why it's supposed to be, uh, why, why the architect chose that design is because uh, to denote that inside the Tengkolo is our brain. That is the brain. That is the knowledge. So that's what it's trying to, what they're trying to say on the concept. Okay. So and the other thing is during that period, most of the buildings they want to have some resemblance of the local culture of the building. Are there any types of uh, difficulties you face doing for the maintenance of the building? Oh, from day one. From day one. From day one. Because when you talk about maintenance. One of the factor is uh, because of the uh, flat roof. Actually, it's a flat roof. Just, when, when you see that roof sloping roof, it's just the coverage. But actually, when you go from the top, uh, you, there are three flat roofs. One after the other one is the big span, and then you have the left and right. So this denotes the the, the three main community of the country. Ah. So that's why you have the three angles, the three the design. So. All this symbolizes something to the architect. So we are talking about the Malays, the Chinese, and the Indians. This we are talking about the Indies. Right now we must talk about the Sabah, the one nation. But at that time, that was what uh, inspired the architect. Um, in terms, um, recently did the building go under renovation? Right. Where they changed a lot? Did they change a lot, or was it a minor, a minor renovation? At the moment, it's. Uh, most of our problem was with the toilets. Okay. Yeah, because the, toilet, the other thing is the, the wear and tear of the building. Mm -hmm. Because we are open to public and thousands of people come in every day. And uh, due to that, uh, wear and tear, because when you come up with a building, sometimes you want better materials. Uh, or uh, because we feel that if it is a good material, high quality, it will be. It can be maintained all the time. Could last longer. But uh, last longer. Uh, the longevity of the, the lifespan of material. Lifespan. Mm -hmm. But the problem with uh, most projects, material whether government or not, you have certain cost limitations. Yeah, I'm talking fine. about the budget. Yeah. You might want the architect must be thinking of this and that. But then the and we say we only have this amount. <laughs> yeah. I uh, give you an example. Initially, we were given uh, the budget cost was uh, estimated at around 40 million. And the budget was reduced to 20 million. million. Wow. So, what did me and my, my team had to do was to do a cost cutting exercise. How do we continue the project without the, uh, and ensuring that the project goes on? We, we don't stop the project. So, what we did was uh, the QS and the team did some calculations. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, instead of building the, all the floors uh, completed uh, at the same time, we did some. Uh, we shelved some of the project okay. temporarily. But what we did was to make sure the outer shell of the building, that means the ground floor until the sixth floor and, and also the auditorium, all the structure is there except for the bricks. Uh, for the wall, the, except that there won't be any walls, there won't be any fishes, right. finishes. Yeah. So that will be done in the second phase. Right. But when you see from outside, if you pass through the Jalan Torazat, then you see that as if it is a completed building. Yeah, it looks nice. It looks nice. And then when we get the money in the second phase, 
for the second phase uh, three years later, four years later. Then only we do the inside. The rhythm of the architecture is showed by the continuous tiling pattern of the roof and the pattern continues into the interior where both sides of the bookshelves are embedded with the pattern. The repetition of the pattern also represents the batik, the traditional dining technique. This creates a contrast between the modern interface of the interior and the traditional aspects of the building. When the building is seen from the exterior, a sense of balance is showcased, creating a calm overview. As well as symmetry within the building creates a sense of seriousness. The facade was captivating, but in our opinion, the interior contrasts it with a dull color theme that lacks saturation, overall creating a serious focus ambience. The library's roof was initially blue. This represented the color of the universe. The blue tiles were also coordinated to signify the blue belt of Malaysia, which was also built on a stretch of limestone. All in all, the National Library of Malaysia is a pinnacle representation of cultural architecture. Although there are vast areas that could be improved and modernized while still keeping the traditional theme, to date, the library serves its purpose to the general public.